$600 in cash bonus plus twice the OAS payments? The national conversation has swiftly turned to Service Canada's huge announcement. Beneath the striking figures, however, the extraordinary financial move by the federal government has also caused tremendous controversy and divisive consequences. The Trudeau government claims that all old age security OAS beneficiaries in Canada will soon get an unexpected multi-billion dollar financial inflow straight into their bank accounts. Retirees could anticipate to receive twice their typical monthly OAS pension amount for the upcoming May payment period. In addition to their quadrupled payments, customers will also receive a unique one-time incentive of $600. The OAS payment increases are being marketed by the Liberal administration as vital respite for Canadian seniors suffering from severe inflationary pressures. They believe that injecting billions of more funds will be able to maintain pensioners' purchasing power and overall financial stability in light of the rapidly rising expenses of necessities like housing, food and heating. But the news has intensified a heated national discussion about the viability and priorities of Canada's retirement financing system. The rewards have been attacked by budget hawks as extremely expensive and reckless spending that will further indebt the country. Senior advocacy organizations, meanwhile, reluctantly applaud any temporary increase in funds while continuing to demand more extensive, comprehensive changes. While seniors anticipate their generous OS payouts, a wider uproar regarding the consequences of this multi-billion dollar ploy is only getting started. The battle lines are drawn across the big Canadian retirement divide. Is it fiscal freefall harming future generations or sustainable economic triage for suffering seniors? A political and economic firestorm has erupted across Canada in response to the Trudeau administration's unexpected decision to dramatically increase old age insurance benefits. The federal government has promised to almost overnight pour well over $10 billion directly into the pockets of seniors by temporarily increasing the monthly pension payments and adding a $1,600 cash bonus for all OAS recipients. Though the decision has been sharply divided among Canadians on the underlying economic prudence and sociological implications behind such an enormous rise of retirement benefits, it has been hailed as crucial financial relief for seniors grappling with high inflation. Regarding fiscal prudence, the increase in OAS payments raises concerns about feeding an unstoppable cycle of unsustainable deficit spending. According to projections from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, the doubling OAS payments for the May issuance period alone will cost more than $8 billion. They estimated the whole federal cost to be close to $12 billion, and that's just for starters if rises continue over time. This amount is in addition to the over $3.5 billion cost for the one-time $600 incentives distributed among over 6 million retirees. Concerns that the Trudeau administration is seriously impeding Canada's financial stability and future economic prospects are intensified by such astounding expenditures. In critics caution that sustained overspending could result in unmanageable fiscal shortfalls, spiraling inflation, and even debt default, given the country's already existing structural deficits and escalating debt payment expenses. This could drastically reduce Canada's financial capacity to support other important policy objectives, such as economic productivity, health care, and climate resilience. Concerns have been raised by fiscal conservatives that the OAS payment increases are intensifying economically disastrous policies. Rather than dumping reckless deficit spending on the economy, they see it as fueling inflation by oversupplying the market with cash. A surplus of fresh purchasing power like this would compel the Bank of Canada to raise interest rates more quickly in an effort to reduce demand from consumers and lower prices. But taking this action runs the risk of throwing the nation into a deep recession with rising unemployment and falling wages undermining the actual financial assistance that seniors are hoping to receive from this step. Supporters of the OAA's payout hikes, however, maintain that the increases offer underfunded pensioners with collapsing finances a vital financial lifeline. As of April 2024, annual inflation reached 8.1%, causing the fixed pension payouts of many seniors to dangerously lag behind the rapidly rising expenses of basic needs including food, rent, and health care. The OAS boost successfully gives seniors a much-needed financial boost and cash flow to support them in maintaining their standard of living and necessities. What does it say about Canada's objectives and moral shortcomings as a wealthy country if it is unable to maintain a minimal level of living for its senior citizens? From a social policy perspective, the OAS hike has heightened concerns about whether Canada's public pension system needs more comprehensive changes. Even though it was designed to provide temporary relief from inflation, it highlights the drawbacks of depending solely on shoddy government payouts to ensure retirement security. 
A significant portion of older singles live below Canada's $30,000 poverty line, despite the fact that maximum OS cuts have increased GCI's payments to almost $2,200 per month. Too many retirees without employment, pensions, or personal savings have normalized a life of poverty, according to advocacy groups like the National Pensioners Federation. Although they concede that the payment increase helps cover a temporary wound, they maintain that Canada has to firmly grow stronger pension pillars like the CPP and workplace retirement plans. This could prevent the OIA's program from needing random, ongoing financial rescues that are insufficient for a respectable retirement. Conversely, some argue that the Canadian government should not be overreached in its role as the primary supplier of retirement income due to philosophical concerns. Regularly increasing government subsidies runs the risk of creating a culture of entitlement and reliance, according to free market analysts and classical economics. According to them, doing so deters people from making wise decisions to use their own money, investments and insurance policies to pay for their retirement. According to them, the OS escalation put Canada on a path towards the government turning into an unaffordable daddy state that gives out limitless handouts. In addition, opponents of the OAS benefits have charged Trudeau's administration with overt vote buying in the run up to the federal elections of 2024. The Liberal administration has strategically planned the distribution of almost $10 billion in fresh funding to pensioners, a critical vote cohort with higher turnout rates with advertising due to begin in a few months. Although the announcement was presented as a response to the economic climate, its suspiciously close timing to election season suggests that it was an attempt to purchase senior support by wasteful expenditure and careless budgeting. The Conservatives have capitalized on these alleged political motives, characterizing Trudeau's payouts as a frantic full-court press to support his party's declining polling positions. They claim that the payments are effectively bribes made with borrowed funds to win over senior citizens in Canada to vote for them. The Liberals are essentially monetarily mortgaging the country's future to support today's pensioners at the price of the wealth of future generations by sharply increasing deficit expenditures. Finally, I justify the increases in OS payments. The inner circle of Trudeau has sharply retaliated against these partisan charges. They claim that after reviewing the economic facts, the Prime Minister and Cabinet decided that in light of the country's historically high rates of inflation, swift and significant action was necessary to keep millions of vulnerable seniors in Canada from falling into poverty or debt. Because OAS payments are now the fastest way for the federal government to infuse cash nationwide, they have allowed the government to move quickly and prevent bureaucratic implementation delays. Um, from their perspective, there would have been significant downstream costs to society had Canada failed to safeguard its older citizens' ability to pay for necessities like food, shelter, and medical care. These could include, among other things, a rise in the number of hospital admissions and nursing care stays, a burden on homelessness and housing subsidies, a decline in consumer spending that hurts businesses and slows economic growth. Leveraging the OA system was a practical option to avert avoidable humanitarian emergencies as accepting such risks was just intolerable. Trudeau's supporters have also refuted claims that the increases in OAS payments are only intended for political purposes. In their view, it is both economically sensible and morally required for Canada to remain a successful society independent of partisan politics and election cycles to promote seniors' financial stability and quality of life. The government aims to uphold Canadian values on the treatment of the aged with dignity and respect by preventing retirees from falling into poverty or making them forgo essentials. Putting aside the contentious political disputes, economists have started examining the possible macroeconomic ramifications of such large federal funding injections. Forecasters predict that when over $10 billion immediately floods into seniors' pockets, it would probably trigger a significant upsurge in consumer spending and investment across Canada. Although the retail, real estate, and investment sectors would benefit temporarily, there are still worries about how spending is concentrated and whether the Canadian economy can withstand increases without leading to uncontrollably high inflation. If an excessive amount of the windfall is directed towards specific industries such as housing and drives up prices in those segments, it could become a self-defeating stimulus that exacerbates problems related to the total cost of living. The impact of the OAA's payments on consumer prices, wage inflation, industrial capacity restrictions, and other possible overheating signals will be closely watched by economists and financial institutions. The Bank of Canada would almost certainly be forced to quicken the pace of interest rate hikes in order to partially offset the stimulative effects while raising borrowing rates for credit cards, mortgages, and companies across the country if such warning signs appeared in their models. 
When considering the overall fiscal picture, organizations such as the Parliamentary Budget Office have expressed concerns that even temporary increases in OAS payments could have disastrous financial effects if they are not reversed. Thus, casting suggests that continuing to make double-digit payments into subsequent years may gradually increase Canada's federal debt load by hundreds of billions. In order to maintain national solvency, this would probably set off vicious cycles of escalations of escalating deficits that would necessitate spending cuts to other programs or additional revenue measures like tax hikes.